I am super excited to show you this next one. So you're used to loading up your own MIDI instrument tracks using all these uh, sound sample sets and you can add your own sound font files. But now in Audio Evolution Mobile 5.0, we get Evolution 1, which is a full on synthesizer built into AEM. So this is amazing on so many fronts. Like <laughs> I'll show you the, the main thing here, like, it's synthesis, right? So we can change anything. Like I can control the sound from start to finish now because this is pure synthesis. It's not using any samples and that's amazing. The backstory is even more amazing because this is based on Synth 1. This is by far one of the most popular iOS synth apps. And now it's in AEM, which means it's now on Android. And I'm really, really, really thrilled about that because more and more people are gonna be able to enjoy this now. And it was originally developed by a good friend of mine, uh, Matthew Fetcher, who made it open source so that everybody could do this. They could just grab it and, and put it wherever they want. And uh, this is the first time it's on Android. And uh, it's also got great presets in here from uh, some other friends of mine, uh, like uh, Dean uh, Electron Sounds did this uh, Get the Invaders. We can even play with the mod wheel here to affect the filter. Really love that preset. Uh, there's also this beautiful pad by Stuart at Red Sky Lullaby. Really luscious sounds. I made a preset for the original when I was doing the Let's Play for it, and I was so inspired to have this on Android that I've like completely revisited it and remastered it as the director's cut. I'm really, really happy with how that sounded. Like I'm making use of all of the features in here. Uh, we got uh, the, the LFOs going all over the place and um, I'm using all the effects. Like I'm really, really happy with the sound because uh, it, it shows off that the, you know, we can have a really evolving sound when we're using these LFOs to modulate things. Like this is just me holding down one key <laughs> and like a whole bunch of stuff is happening. And I'm gonna show you how you can uh, get into this yourself. If we tap on the name here and load up a preset, if we go to the starter bank here, there's the init and we can just start tweaking to taste. It's kind of very boring to start off with, but let's uh, throw in a couple of saws here and detune the second one. And let's throw in a sub oscillator. I'm gonna put it to square. Nice, thick, rich sound here. Uh, let's jump now into the envelope where I can tweak the filter and how this is gonna behave uh, over time. So here's the uh, amp envelope, which means if I give it a lot of attack, it'll take a while for the, the sound to build up. See a short one, you hear it instantly as soon as I press the key, but longer, it takes time to build up. So let's give it some, this decay means that after it goes through that attack phase, it starts to decay down to whatever the sustain's at. Bring up the sustain. See, see, it drops as soon as I bring it up. All right. Let's just give it a little bit of release. And now I'm going to tweak the filter, which is currently in low pass mode. There's a band pass and high pass as well. Once again, you get the ADSR over here for controlling how the uh, amount knob is affecting that filter. So here, I, if I give it long decay, it takes a while to come down, but if I take it all the way down, kind of a swoopy sound. And, uh, over in the LFO, we can set 
all kinds of different modulation destinations for our two LFOs. And their rate uh, is, if you see that this top area here, as I move this knob, you can see that we can set the rate to uh, whatever we want. So if we set it to a bar here, it's going to now modulate the cutoff, as I've indicated, by this amount. And we can hear that now. This is basically being moved up and down from its position. Let me change this so you can hear it. Once again, I'm only holding a knob. The LFO is doing the rest here. And we can send it to all kinds of interesting places. Like, let's use the second LFO and start playing with the bit crusher effect. Uh, but we're going to make this one a little slower. Like, we're going to set this to three bars. And, oh, and set the amount to maybe this much. <laughs> uh, we turn on the bit crusher here. Bring this down here to find a crunchy spot. That's a little too crunchy. So by having these two LFOs running at different speeds, we get a kind of an interesting evolution of our sound. And we can throw in a reverb. And delay. And my favorite, the stereo widener. Now the decay time here so that I can now show you the uh, ARP, which can also be used as a sequencer. So if I turn this on now, I switch into sequence mode. If I use the uh, hold up here in the top, I can now press one key and it's going to hold it down. And now I can use the knobs up here to set uh, notes relative to whatever I'm pressing. So in this case, it's a C2. It's going up three notes there. And it's going back t to that C2, and then it's going up five semitones, and then we're going to do like maybe uh, another five here, and then seven here. So it's a good way to, to quickly build up a pattern and, and just kind of play with it. You can change the uh, amount of steps and the division, so we could actually make this go slower or faster. Just by changing how big these notes are supposed to be. And we like what you have, just tap on the name again. And we can save the preset. And give it whatever name we want. Even set a category, this is an ARP sequence, and then some sort of user text to remind you of what this was. Uh, this was a sequenced bass. 